Hey guys, we're going to do the last lesson in chapter 8 for us. Remember we started at the end and then we ended with the beginning. And we're going to be talking about functions and equations. And basically, the two represent the same thing. Just one, uh, the way that they write. The first part of the equation is a slightly different for a function than for an equation. So let's get into a definition of a word term you're going to be hearing for several years, linear function. Now, linear function has a giveaway word in it. If you look at the first four letters of linear, it does spell the word line. And function is just, you know, a rule. You put something in, you get something out. And... So we're going to go ahead and write the definition of linear function is simply a function whose graph is a line. Okay, that's it. We're going to get a line when I graph this. Now, I do want to talk about the definition of a function again. I, you know, my brain doesn't remember anything, right? So I may have given you this before, but I'm going to give it to you again because I saw a lot of people didn't like writing it down. So a function um, is a relationship that pairs exactly one output value. that's your y value, to one input value. Now you'll study this deeper uh, as you go through the grades, and it's basically saying that for each x you put in, you can only get uh, one y coming out. Now you can put in different x's and it comes out with the same y, that's okay. But you can't put in a y value or an x value and get two different y values. That won't work, okay? And you'll figure that out when we go down the line. So a couple things that we're going to talk about when we are dealing with our equation represents a function is that we're going to get an inf or a function table, and we're going to take that function table, and we're going to put it into a... Um, well, it's a yeah, function table. Then we're going to put it into like a graph table. And then we're going to try to figure out what the pattern was, the rule. And then you're going to learn how to graph all of those again. Okay? So that's what we're going to be working on on this guy. Nothing too... Actually, we've done most of this. Okay? Okay. So let's start with an example of... A function table. Oh, let me give you just a different color. Let's go. Function table. So function table is going to look something like this. Let's go to black. Here we go. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So a little bit bigger and one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we're going to have two layers of it, and the top is going to be the input, which is our x value, and then the output, which is going to be our y value. And we're going to have inputs of one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I have too many boxes here, don't I? Yep, I do. Let me get rid of that one. Sorry about that. And the corresponding x values, or the y values, excuse me, are 9, 18, 27, 36, and 45. So if I want to go ahead and change this into, like I wanted to graph this, and I want to put a rule in it, I'm going to write it vertically. 
So the input's going to come first. which is our x, and then we need to figure out what's happening, and we'll write that in as we discover it, and then we're going to have an output, which is going to be our y. Okay. We're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. The outputs in order are nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six, forty-five. So what we're gonna do is to figure out what did we do to one to make it nine. Now it's increasing, so it could be an adding pattern. So I could add eight, so that if it holds true, two plus eight would equal 18, but it equals 10. So it's not an adding pattern. It's got to be a multiplying pattern. So I'm going to put my original numbers in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like if I multiply by 30, I mean by 9, geez, 30, where did I come up with that? I do get the 9. If I multiply by 9, 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 9 is 27. 4 times 9 is 36 and 5 times 9 is 45. So what I get for my rule is y equals 9x. So those rules that we were figuring out, that's going to be part of what we get to work on. Now let's say I want to graph this, okay? So here's what I got to remember. To graph, I'm going to put it over here, to graph. We're going to take the input value, and then comes the output value. So if we translate that to what we see in the graph, we're going to have very simple. The input is now the x value, and the output is the y value. Okay? All right, so if I wanted to graph this, I think I'm going to bring in some... Yeah, I won't do graph paper. I'll just do it like this. So all my numbers are positive, so that's going to be just a first quadrant graph. i got to count by ones here. And there's my x is labeled and my y is labeled. And I'm going to count... One, two, three, four, five. But this time on the vertical, we're going to count by nines because that's how our numbers increase. So this is nine, this is 18, 27, 36, and 45. So if I graph this, one paired up with nine, 2 paired up with 18. Now if my spacing is good, we'll see the shape take form. 3 and 27, 4 and 36, 5 and 45. And what we should see forms a line. If it doesn't form a line, then Either I did something wrong in the graphing or I did something wrong in getting my values. Okay, so not a big stretch. Input becomes the X, output becomes the Y. <clears throat> so I want to do one more example with you, and this is kind of a backwards problem. So what you're going to be given is a graph. So I'm going to go ahead, and uh, so basically we have um, a graph is shown uh, of the height of a cactus over a, a few years. OK, 
Okay, so your graph is going to be again a first quadrant graph. Now, sometimes your book does this a good job with this, and sometimes your book does not do a good job with this. Okay, so I'm just going to share with you. Um, the very first thing we're going to be graphing is going to be 40. Or I want to be have 40 on my graph. So I'm skipping from 0 to 40, and then I'm going to count by 1s. So 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Now I can't count by 1s. Let me put in my numbers. 42, 44, 46. I can't count by 1s in some places and count by 40 in another place. So I'm going to do something called a line break. And a line break looks just like this. Boop, boop. And basically what this line break says from 0 to 40, several numbers are being skipped. And that gives us permission to kind of draw a funky looking graph like this, okay, is to put that little line break in there. Um, sometimes your book shows it and sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so what you're going to see is a graph. Oh, I forgot to put my x values in. So let's go. So we'll just put three numbers. And the x numbers represent the years uh, of growth. That's what X represents. And then the Y is going to represent the height in inches. So they put that in parentheses. Okay. So when I graph this, let's see, in one year it was at 42 inches. After two years, it grew to 44 inches. After three years, it grew to 46 inches. And then these were kind of connected to each other. So I'm going to make my dots a little bit bigger. Make them stand out. Okay. So now they're going to ask you to observe that and then make a table of values. Okay, uh, and we're going to just do a simple one of an input output. So input is your x, output is your y, and this is going to be a pretty small little graph because we only, or chart, because we only have three numbers, right? And your outputs, let's see, with 1, it was 42 came out. With 2, it was 44. And with 3, it was at 46. So our job now is to try to figure out how we got from 1 to 42, from 2 to 44, and from 3 to 46. So let me think about this. I need to get into the 40s. But if I, huh, if I multiply by 40, that would work on the first one, but not on the second one. So what if I look at each of these numbers, like 40 and 2, 40 and 4, 40 and and six. So what I could, I'm going to try a guess here that I'm going to do some math to my input, then add 40 to it. So what would I do to one to get to two? So let's see, one times two equals two. Okay, let me try that with two. If I multiply two by two, I get four, and that matches that guy, that matched that guy. And then if I have three times two equals six, 
that matches that guy. So it sounds like I'm going to take my input value, I'm going to double it, and then I'm going to add 40. So then what we do is we write y equals. So then this is going to be the equation. Let's try that again. of the growth of the cactus. Now I'm going to give you a little hint about what that 40 actually represents. And if my graph was drawn accurately, this would work out pretty well, but mine's not quite as accurate. Basically, 40 is how big the cactus was when the guy got it. Okay, And then each year it looks like it increased by two inches, two more inches. So each year it grew by two. So first year it showed up two inches, second year it got another two inches, so up to four inches, and the next year another two inches or six inches. So that is kind of some of the things you're going to be working on. Now that equation right there is the toughest one possible, and all the other ones you're going to get are going to be a lot easier than that. Okay? All right, good luck with this, guys. We'll talk about it in class. Bye now.